Mammoth at Holiday World in Splash and Safari in Santa Claus, Indiana is a record-breaking water coaster built by Pro Slide. This slide opened as the longest water coaster in the world in 2012, stealing the record from Wildebeest, which is located just next door in the same park. But is it better than Wildebeest? In this review, I will discuss Mammoth and why it's one of the best water slides in the world. Wildebeest opened in 2010, and this water coaster was a resounding success. I have a separate review that discusses more about Wildebeest and the history of water coasters up to that point, but Wildebeest immediately won the Golden Ticket Award for the best water slide and generated lines up to an hour on busy days. It was clear Holiday World had a winner on their hands. So Splash and Safari doubled down their pro slide water coasters. Just two years later in 2012, the park would spend $9 million which would be their biggest investment to date on Mammoth, a second hydromagnetic water coaster from ProSlide. The slide would steal Wildebeest's record as the world's longest water coaster with 1,763 feet or 537 meters of track. Whether or not this slide still retains this record is debated, as Toothless's trickling torpedo at the DreamWorks water park at the American Dream Mall is advertised as being longer but no stats are given for that slide. When Mammoth was announced in 2011, I remember many enthusiasts criticizing the park's decision at the time, stating the ride would be redundant with Wildebeest next door, but Mammoth silenced its critics once it actually opened. Mammoth provides a radically different ride experience. Unlike most water coasters that feature inline seating like Wildebeest, Mammoth has circular rafts seating up to six riders. This has several advantages, for one, the rafts can spin throughout the ride, which adds an all-new dimension to the experience. Two, the airtime is crazy. I mentioned in my Diamondback review how much I love experiencing backwards ejector airtime on a roller coaster. It's an extremely rare sensation. Getting backwards airtime to any degree is an equivalent sensation on a water coaster, and Mammoth delivers just that. When Mammoth originally opened, it had clover leaf rafts but recently it switched over to circular rafts. I'm not sure why the park made this change, but it doesn't impact the ride experience in my opinion. Like Wildebeest, these rafts have a steel plate in the bottom that allows the linear induction motors, or LIMs, to propel the raft uphill. This is the fastest and smoothest propulsion method for a water coaster. Mammoth requires a minimum of 500 pounds per raft. Each raft can seat up to six riders and a maximum of 1,050 pounds. I think Mammoth is best if you're closer to the 500 pound minimum. Lighter rafts are propelled faster uphill, which results in better sustained airtime during the ride. This can be tricky to experience though, since Splash and Safari tries to maximize the ride's capacity by pairing groups. The station has a scale that gives a green or red light, depending if you're within the specified weight range. These rafts have absolutely no restraints which is one of the reasons this slide is so thrilling. This water slide has bona fide airtime, and there's nothing stopping you from experiencing it. Mammoth is located in the very back of Splash and Safari, and it's arguably the most popular attraction in both the water park and dry park. It's not uncommon to find this slide with an hour wait on a hot summer day. My recommendation is to ride this slide shortly after the water park opens if you want to avoid a sizable queue line or you can utilize the single rider line if you're alone or you don't mind splitting up your party. This has often got me in the slide less than 5 or 10 minutes. One of the worst things about water slides is the grueling 5-6 to six story hike up a series of stairs. It often feels like you're at the gym rather than an amusement park. It's especially frustrating on the ones where the rafts have an elevator atop the tower while guests need to walk. Both Pro Slide and Splash and Safari agreed with that notion which is why both Wildebeest and Mammoth have a station more reminiscent of an actual roller coaster. This not only saves guests a lot of energy, but it makes the ride more accessible too. Wildebeest station has a continuously moving conveyor belt, and it's separated into a load and unload area to expedite the process. Mammoth also has a station. Mammoth's is longer, so this one doesn't have a separate load and unload area. It's all done in the same area. Once seated, a conveyor belt slowly brings you atop the 69 foot or 21 meter tall lift. I wish this ride would launch you up the hill, just like the park did with their latest water coaster in Cheetah Chase. That way, the action starts from the get-go. 
but once you crest the lift, the action is non-stop, so it's easily forgiven. Before delving into the layout, there are two things about Mammoth that can potentially make this ride uncomfortable if you're unprepared. First, the slide has a lot of misters that will constantly spray riders in the face. For this reason, I wear goggles on the slide so I can keep my eyes open. Second, the water on Mammoth is frigid no matter when you ride it. I heard it's due to where the slide is located, but just be prepared. I'd recommend wearing a water shirt, which works very well at Splash and Safari since they're a rare water park with no body slides. Once you reach the top of the lift, you round a tight corner and plunge down the first drop. The first drop gives a faint pop of airtime, and then you rise up another sizable hill into a tunnel turnaround. Unlike Wildebeest, the ascents into these turnarounds do not give pops of airtime, but the uphill launches are exciting since you often spin throughout them. So not only is it disorienting, but you get some faint centripetal forces. This turnaround leads into a shorter drop that doesn't offer any airtime. Then comes one of the craziest moments on any water slide, or maybe even any attraction for that matter, the camelback. You are rapidly launched over a large hill and immediately drop back down. And this hill offers so many sensations. Your raft is often spinning throughout this element, and you simultaneously get a few seconds of weak but sustained floater airtime. Getting airtime like that with absolutely no restraints is insane. You then rise up into another turnaround. The drop off this one is very steep. It feels steeper than the maximum angle of descent of 45 degrees, so this drop gives a nice pop of airtime. That's followed by another lengthy uphill ascent into yet another turnaround. The drop off this turnaround is one of the milder ones on the ride, but it's the calm before the storm, as it's followed by another camelback. This one is a bit shorter than the first one, but it's every bit as wild, offering the spinning and sustained floater airtime simultaneously. It feels completely out of control. You then rise up into a turnaround and traverse a few turns in complete darkness before re-emerging into the daylight and splashing into a runoff pool. The pool then slowly meanders back to the station especially since your raft is likely taking on water and starting to sink. That's how big the final splash is. So what would I rate Mammoth? I would give this water slide a perfect 10 out of 10. This is about as perfect as a water slide can be. Most water slides are over in a flash, but Mammoth gives a long and satisfying ride. This one may not have as many drops as Wildebeest, but I think Mammoth is a pinch more exciting since you have the opportunity to spin and experience drops going sideways or backwards. Plus, those two camelbacks are crazy with the spinning and sustained airtime. Airtime with no restraints like this is absolutely magical. This is probably the second best water coaster I have personally ridden. I slightly prefer Toothless's Trickling Torpedo. That water slide has less turns or filler in between the drops, and the drops pack just as much of a punch as the ones in Wildebeest. I do need to note that I haven't yet been on Krakatau at Volcano Bay, and that's something I hope to fix this year. I do wish more parks built water coasters with the larger style rafts, since the spinning adds a whole new dimension. The only other one I've personally encountered like this is Falcon Filage at Yas Waterworld in Abu Dhabi. So those are my thoughts on Mammoth, the thrilling water coaster at Holiday World and Splash and Safari. Have you been on this slide? How do you think Mammoth compares to Wildebeest? or the other water coasters out there. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.